Let me make something clear before we get too far into it today, folks. This video is not a guide on obtaining gems. It's about what we can do once we obtain them. But sure, I will glance over a couple locations for them. However, I will not be shown how to get them. That's for another time. So for now, let's just fire through all things gems. First up, the warmth of the red gem. They can be obtained via grave digging, killing red hounds, and perhaps even earthquakes down under, along with the many possibilities within the ruins themselves. Plus, we have a 0.02% chance via tumbleweeds, and a guaranteed 2 from vanquishing dragonfly, however. But, with a red gem in hand, we can fight fire with fire upon crafting a fire staff. You'll just need to toss in a spear and two nightmare fuel to do it. It is a magical ranged weapon, and you will need a shadow manipulator to craft it, but when you do, you will be able to harness the power of combustion. The fire staff costs but one sanity to cast, but it sets your targets aflame, and it deals fire damage along the way. The damage overall is kinda worthless in my opinion, and it doesn't stack either, which just sucks. So I really don't recommend using one in combat, to be honest. So if you're like me and just hate Smokey Bear, you can go ahead and do your best to not prevent forest fires. But doing so will cost 5% durability each time. But the staff still functions the same as a torch, so I'm not too sure why you would even go this route. Just use a torch. To be honest, I think fire staffs are pointless and need much more reason to be in the game if Clay really wants players to use them. Next up, we will fork over a handful of gold to craft ourselves a nightlight, and we can use a Presta Hatinator to do so. The nightlight provides a light similar to a campfire, however the nightlight doesn't actually provide any warmth whatsoever. So do not make the mistake of building them to hopefully prevent freezing. But keep in mind that that also means that you can't overheat from them either. But I really wouldn't stand too close as your sanity will drain by 3 per minute to a total of 8 per minute depending on the time of day. So yes, the nightlight is fueled by your dreams. Or rather, your nightmares. One Nightmare Fuel provides 175 seconds of light and it only takes three total fuel to reach maximum fuel levels, which really isn't that bad all things considered. It's aesthetically pleasing, not too hard to make, fuel efficient, and gives off good light. So it's up to you to decide if it's worth it. But you know what is worth it? Your life. And with a life-giving amulet crafted, you can live it twice. But what do I mean by that? Well, before we get into that, let's discuss another mechanic at play with the magical red Ami. Every 30 seconds, the life-giving amulet will restore 5 health at the cost of 5 hunger when equipped. And of course, this effect only takes place if you have less than max health, but be careful. The effect drops the durability by 5% each time, and I cannot tell you how many times I have forgotten that it was equipped only to have it drop to 0% on me and then break. So don't leave it on as you don't need it on to take full advantage of the amulet itself. Cause let's say you have yourself an ironic death experience involving starvation in a game that implores you to eat. The ami will actually drop on the ground when you die and the player will then be able to haunt it as a ghost which in turn will resurrect you right then and there but doing so consumes the item, but also comes with other penalties. Your health will drop to 50, but max health will remain the same, thankfully, but hunger will now be two-thirds of the max it used to be, and sanity will plummet to half. You are alive, but you really aren't doing all that well, to be honest. But the final red gem craft, the end is nigh. Unique to a wicker bottom, the end is nigh must be pretty darn special, right? Well, give it a read and see for yourself. Sixteen lightning strikes at the cost of 33 sanity. Wicker is a god. But on to the chilly nature of the blue gem, everyone. 
Dragonfly drops two of these suckers for you, but you do have a 20% chance of getting one from murdering a blue hound, while having the option to do some more grave digging, ruins rushing, or even rumbling through the tumbleweeds. I do believe blue boys to be above that of the reds, but let's find out together. Grab a spare spear and just smash a blue gem on top of it to create a lovely ice staff for yourself. And yes, we will be looking to freeze our enemies instead of burning them alive. Small mobs like rabbits take but one blast to the face to freeze them, but as you can see, it is temporary. They will shake free eventually. And that goes for any frozen mob, like tree guardians here. They take four blasts to freeze, but others can take even more. And each use of the staff costs its 5% durability too. And while some are actually immune to it, don't go thinking that you have a new strategy to make fights simpler. Because attacking anything when it's frozen will just knock it out of that state. So it is just better to let them break free themselves if you want them to de-aggro on you. But why should others be the only ones freezing their butts off? Craft a chilled amulet and ice will flow through your veins. The amulet lasts for but six minutes, and while it's equipped, you will find it difficult to overheat. I mean, look at this just now. My face should be melting off next to this roaring fire, but my temperature isn't even reaching 40 degrees. The chilled ami is a great tool for players to overcome summer. And it comes with the added bonus of freezing anything that attacks the player but it will require more hits from mobs than the ice staff, so it's not really that worth it. I don't recommend using it for that purpose. And finally, let us not forget that nine blue gems in Chester plus a full moon equals one a lovely snow hopping boy. A snow Chester functions the exact same as a normal one when it comes to storage, but it comes with the added mechanic of being a portable ice box, which is incredibly useful for transporting food, keeping food at the ready, and for the summer season. Red and blue turns to purple. The purple gem can be found down in the ruins, potentially dropped by the dragonfly, but are a guaranteed drop from clockworks, so get to murdering. And the next thing on your to-do list should be crafting a shadow manipulator. What's the difference between a press the hat nader and a shadow manipulator? Think of it this way. The press a hat nader is the science machine of magic, meaning you'll have access to tier 1 magic recipes when near it. But when it comes to the manipulator, it's a tier 2 magic station that unlocks all the magic recipes in the magic tab. Similar to how the alchemy engine unlocks all the science ones. Build one, and you'll be questioning if you're even dealing with science anymore. And then, just completely ignore any of those warnings about manipulating shadows to do your bidding, and do it anyway by crafting what is known as a Bat-Bat, a magical melee weapon. It's a unique one, but I'm not too sure if it's worth it though, as its whole gimmick is that each hit on an enemy leeches 6.8 health at the cost of 3.4 sanity. That is, as long as you aren't already fully healed. Because if you are, then you're just using a weapon that does minimal damage at 42.5 per hit. And it's really not that spectacular. But it's time to bend space as we know it. And crafting a telelocator staff will do just that. Many know of its ability to teleport mobs when casted. But did you know that you can actually cast it upon yourself? If you do so, lightning will strike. And it may even begin the rain. But most intriguing-like, you will soon be warped to a random location on the map in an instant. It's not really the most efficient way to travel, but that lightning strike can actually charge you WX players, so keep that in mind. And make note, using the staff underground doesn't end in the same teleportation, but rather a tiny earthquake that will drop minerals and such similar to the actual quakes. But if you really wish to control your teleporting journey, you'll need to build a telelocator focus as seen here, and you need to socket three purple gems within its pillars first. Then, let's say you need a quick getaway from something or have had enough of dealing with the fat man himself. Once you teleport a mob or yourself with a locator in play, you will be transported to the focus, but it will consume the gems. 
This can be used to set up all sorts of farms with trapped mobs. And lastly, the Nightmare Amulet. For when you really want things to get a little insane. When equipped, your sanity will instantly plummet to zero and shadow creatures will begin to materialize. The amulet can only last for a total of 3 minutes and 12 seconds, but it does have many many uses. Farming said nightmare creatures being one of them. But there will be a handful spawning in looking to bite your face off, so be careful. We don't want any bad news beard situations on our hands. But make note of how important these suckers actually are, as you will need them down the line to navigate the obelisks in the atrium. Some drop when you are insane, while others only allow you to pass when you aren't cuckoo for cocoa buffs, so have one with you. Plus, you'll need the Ami for the Fuel Weaver fight when it comes to be that time. And oh yeah, you'll need a purple gem for a moon rock idol too. But we've already discussed this in full, so we are going to move on. It's time to get ancient with it, folks, and the green gem will kick us right off. While you do have a chance to get one in a tumbleweed, your best bets are from the ruins and dragonfly once again. Are you noticing a pattern here? But head on down under to the pseudoscience station and do some ancient crafting, and hopefully walk away with the construction amulet at the ready. The amulet makes it so that every available crafting recipe only costs half the resources needed to build it, but it will still cost the ami 20% of its durability to use. If you're building anything down here, get you one of these puppies first. But instead of building stuff, let's destroy things with the Deconstruction Staff. Using 20% durability and draining you of 20 sanity, you can use the staff on structures to return 100% of the materials used in the crafting process. And this goes for just about any structure that isn't a wall. However, it's all about the durability when it comes to items. A fire staff here at 100% will return all the materials used to craft it apart from the red gem, as you don't get any gem back from deconstruction. But a staff at nearly half durability will return less than the needed materials to craft it. This is but one example and it will all change, but just know that this ability to return needed crafting materials is easily abusable. Well, let's move on to the orange gem. And like the green gem, your better odds of finding one lie within the nightmarish halls of the ruins or on the fiery wings of the dragonfly. And they can be used to craft another amulet, the Lazy Forager. While equipped, the Forager turns anyone into Beard and allows them to just stand around and let others do all the work for them. It will automatically pick up items that are on the ground around you without you being able to lift a finger and can do so a whopping 225 times. This is a great tool to go about collecting items in dangerous places like the Swamp. But if you've also always wondered how to get the items from these cave holes around, the Lazy Forager is the one and only answer to do so. But moving on to the Lazy Explorer. In essence, it is exactly like a walking cane, but it comes with a special added bonus, telepoofing. Doing so costs you 15 sanity and 5% durability of the Explorer itself, but this mechanic allows you to jump across impassable gaps on the surface and down in the caves as well, even allowing for an easy entrance into the atrium. It can also come in handy for the Fuel Weaver bout too. It's time for the yellow gem to shine, and I'm starting to sound like a broken record here folks. So go kill the dragonfly for a chance at one, or go smashing everything you see within the ruins. Do so, and you'll be able to craft yet another amulet for us to play with. The Mag Illuminescence. The Mag provides a small light radius around you when equipped while also giving you a 20% bonus to your movement speed. The amulet lasts for about one in-game day and will lose durability when just equipped. However, it can be efficiently refueled with Nightmare Fuel as but one increases the Mag's durability by 37.5%. But careful now, if the mag hits 0%, it doesn't just sit in your inventory at 0% waiting to be fueled. It will break entirely, so do not let it break. Next up, 
the star caller staff now i've used this thing about a million times already so unless you're new here you should know how to use this guy but quickly the dwarf star spawns last 28 minutes provides warmth can be cooked on and comes with a plus 25 sanity aura to it so have fun being a god and oh yeah we have the worthless iridescent gems as well, obtainable only via the deconstruction of a moon caller staff. But I do suspect these will soon have a significant role to play in the worlds to come. And double oh yeah, moon lenses. Almost all the gems we just covered can be socketed within cratered moon rocks to create their specific moon lens. And they will show up on your map in their specific colors, which can be used to mark various locations around the world if you wish. And some of these moon lenses are actually needed to craft structures like the Akko Vigil, the Moon Dial, and the Lazy Deserter respectively. And the Lazy Deserter is one of the most important items out there, so get you one. But there you have it everyone, an extensive deep dive into Don't Starve Together's many shinies and what they can do for you. As you've just seen, the possibilities are numerous, and heck, that still wasn't everything. But thanks for watching folks, well wishes to all of you out there, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye!